My name is Fred Niehaus. I thought I'd come out here and present from the AP capital of the world here in Richfield, Ohio. So uh, I was able to con Jim into coming out here and setting up a little bit of video for me here. So we're going to talk today a little bit about what 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 do you do in Richfield? You know, you see, I've seen Fred throw APs, you know, pour water on him, shoot him with his gun, run over with a truck. But you know, what, where does he work, right? So I want to touch on that a little bit. And, and then dive into the new access points and things. So basically in Richfield, Ohio here, the, we refer to this as the RF Center of Excellence. This is the where the access point, wireless land controller, and all hardware RF development's done. So if we want to take a quick look here, in this building, we can do everything from make boards, do mechanicals, processors. We have a full Wi-Fi interoperability lab. We have an electromagnetic compliance lab, antenna lab. You know, from, from in your head to in your hand, we can do everything in this building, right? So from 1993 to, to, to now, we've built more access points than anybody on planet Earth. And, and, and from end-to-end -end design, complete analysis, simulation, validation, all this happens in this one building, in this one location. So that said, you know, Cisco has this thing they call Pioneer Award, right? And, and, uh, and, and Cisco has lots of BUs, business units. Those are like little stores in a shopping mall. Everybody's, you know, tons and tons of them. All kinds of technology from, from you know, WebEx working with Lockheed Martin to get, get WebEx on the moon. You know, there's many, many things that we do. So it's difficult to win a Pioneer Award within Cisco. And we got six of them things. So, you know, Chuck Robbins spends a lot of time signing them access points. The other thing is that innovation leads to patents. We've probably got more patents than anybody. You know, I, I don't care about patents that much other than to tell you that these patents are, are they go from fundamental design. You know, you know, when you take a patent like this and you look at it and you go, okay, uh, Bob Meyer had this, he recently retired. And it's like roaming using reassociation. You know, we've got fundamental patents on roaming. We've got fundamental patents on all kinds of things, but we also have deep patents too, and I'll talk about that in, in just just a little bit here. But anyway, you can go in office and in, in, in a typical office and see patents lined up, not even out of the packages, right? So we can also in this building do everything from electromagnetic compliance, FCC testing, Wi-Fi alliance testing, prototyping. You know, we can make our own boards populate, and we can three D print. If I three D print something like this. I can tell exactly this is this would be metal, right? So this would be metal, and I and I can tell exactly where to put my heat gap pad. I know exactly on that riser where to put it. I can model it, get the thing all working, get everything lined up, and then go get the metal made. I mean, we can do just everything in this building. It's phenomenal. When you look at antennas, now look at we 3D print, we can metal cut, we can do everything. You know, we can prototype antenna elements here in our lab, antenna modeling lab. We can simulate, fabricate, and validate in one in one lab in one day. What does that mean? Well, if I design an antenna, if I if I make an antenna, and I put it on this board, and I choose to move it just a little bit over, you know, the answer is, well, how does that change the antenna pattern? You know, and in any other company, it would be like, well, let's send that out to the lab and get our results back. You know, I go down and talk to Jonathan Seifert in our lab, and in an hour, I got to answer how that thing works, right? If you look at this chamber. You know, in this area here, there's a little door in the first picture, and that leads into this chamber. We can do 3D heat map balls. We can do your Smith charts. We can do just about anything that you could ever want to do on an emission on an AP from one, one thing. So that's cool. So let's talk a little bit about engineering innovation, right? So if you look at things like the AP hardware, people tend to think, oh, just a piece of hardware. No, it's not. I mean, it, when we look at our access points, we're trying to say every milliwatt counts, whether that's every dB counts, whether that's a milliwatt in power or dB in RF. We put a FET bridge inside, a fuel effect transistor bridge inside that AP, inside those APs to basically, instead of using diodes, which our competitors do, it gives us one watt of power savings right off the bat before we even go into power profiles or other ways to save. You know, there, there's a lot of quiet innovation we never talk about being, you know, in, in Richfield. And the part of that is how do you get all of these radios in a multiband radio AP, all of those antennas with all those radios and not have any performance degradation or noise floor problems? You, you know, and, and that's all because we do all of that 
RF antenna design, radio design here in Richfield. If um, in Richfield, we control all the hardware aspects of the AP design. We don't rely on others for simulation, for analysis. We don't, you know, anything that anybody's given us, a reference design where that's what we get in and we look at and we go, hmm, okay. Now, how many patents on my wall can I apply some of our IP into? How can we make this thing better from a noise floor situation? We got patents on noise floor degradation, we got patents on high antenna isolation and things. So basically it's all about taking any reference design or anything we have and improve on that in all aspects so that you're you're releasing something that's just awesome. You know, that's the best AP that we can we can kick out, right? So that said, that's Richfield in a nutshell. If you talk about the Wi-Fi evolution, we've been making wireless access points since way before 1993. We were there in 1999 when Cisco acquired us. Every one of these Wi-Fi, one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got three to five APs and every one of those technologies or more. Nobody else in the industry has that. With Wi-Fi 6E coming, you know, that, that came out, we now have a bunch of new spectrum. So we've got lots of new channels, lots of new things. So, so now you got to kick out an AP that will use that spectrum and do so efficiently, right? So I want to talk about the 9136. As, this, as 6 gigahertz came out, we needed an AP to address that, right? And as I started to say before, you, you know, you can do anything in software, you know, that's the mind, you know, but, but you only got one shot at this body or this device. When we kick this device out and we've made more APs than anybody, you can't whistle it back, you can't change it, you can't modify it. So we wanted to come out with the very best AP that we could come out with, right? And this 9136 is the only AP in the industry that can not only do, you know, 2.4 gig at four by four, but out the gate, it gives you five gigahertz at eight by eight, and six gigahertz at four by four. Well, why did we do that? Well, you know, it's a transition to get to six gig. You know, you know, it's going to be an issue. You know, as clients come to market, things happen. You really want to have a lot of flexibility in five gig as well. So, this AP can actually, you know, and it split itself and you know, hardware wise, it's capable to split itself and become two five gig AP four by fours and a six gig. And then on top of that. You've got your dedicated AI machine learn, learning, you know, sensor radio that you know that, that keeps your access point count numbers down because it can do the whips and wids and all the the monitoring and the things that you need to do. This a AP also has a, a 2.4 IoT uh, radio, you know, Bluetooth radio, but it also has a USB port at nine watts. So you know, nine watts is a lot of power. So this AP is designed to give you more radios more flexibility, high power. It's got built-in environmental sensors. I'll, I'll hit on that in just, just a little bit as well. And lots of things you can do with it. If you were to take the lid off that or look at the antenna system on this thing, okay? We did an awful lot of work in Richfield. As I mentioned with our antenna modeling labs and the things that we, we can do on the fly, every AP we try to come out with the best antenna system we can. This particular one, if you look at it, the corner ones are 2.4 and 5 gig. So 2.4, 5 gig, that's your 5 gig, first 5 gig, 4 by 4. Then in the middle, those red antennas that you're looking at is an additional 5 gig. So that gives us eight antennas on 5 gig so that we can do two, a 5 gig, two 4 by 4s. But what about 6 gig? The blue antennas, if you take a look, look the blue antennas are the dual band and then the green ones on the top, you know, 9, 10, you know, 11, 12, those antennas are, are dedicated 6 gig. That's how we can do to 5 gig and run 6 at the same time. This thing has all of those antennas on the array. If you if you were to actually physically look at it, you know, it, they're, they're laid out on the board this way. These Alfred antennas on the right, uh, designed antennas, are, are actually mounted on the plastic of the AP. Gives us just a little bit of height, just gives us a little bit more isolation, a little bit, a little bit better performance. So that's how those break down. So that in a recap, that's that's the 9136. But I want to talk a little bit about some, some other interesting things, right? So, so we've used the same standard metal bracket for the last 15 years. The, you know, this bracket, you know, somebody came up to me the other day and says, hey, Fred, I want you to see this. I'm like, what? And it was some competitor or something talking. And while they were talking, they said, 
And we accidentally fit into the Cisco brackets, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, no kidding you accidentally. It's the best bracket in the world. You can even put a padlock on it. <laughs> and, 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 and not only that, but, but, you know, it, it's, it's just, you, you know, what we do out there is we design things, you know, you know, in, in 2007 or where we hit a billion in wireless, you know how many of them brackets are out there in the field? You know, you, you want to fit, fit those is, is the point I'm making. Right. And, um, at the same breath, he also said something about, oh, we won this customer and that customer. And I'm thinking, you know, why don't you talk to me about a, about, well, why don't you talk to, well, I want to talk about my color of the AP, but anyway, why don't you talk to me about the customers you won in the hot Goodyear tire plant or that cold Kroger freezer, places that, you know, that we make these things to, to function in, right? We, we took this AP, you know, and, and we're changing the color slightly, by the way. We're changing this color because I wrote a tech doc on color, Cal color and Cisco color and everybody's special. I go, if I go down the corner, what is this color? You know, so, so now the AP aligns with Sherwin Williams original white and Benjamin Moore's American white. So if you've, you know, if you wanna, wanna be able to match this AP in the environment, it's easy to get the colors. So, so anyway, to get back to my talking about Kroger freezers and hot Goodyear tire plants, you, you know, you basically, want to have the AP give you additional functionality. We thought, well, what can we give you besides more five gig AP and you know an, an additional five gig AP? Why don't we just put some sensors in that thing, right? So some competitors have a sensor that might do temperature, or maybe if you, something to detect if you knock it off the wall or some damn thing, which you won't have a problem if you have our brackets. But anyway, if you were to look at what this does, this has a gas sensor in it, okay? Why do I care about that? Well, there's a, there's fancy marketing use cases in the next slide, but I'm going to tell you why you care about that. You care about that because if somebody's got too lean or paint thinner or you're in a manufacturing environment, somebody spilled something, you know, I want to know, is the air any good to breathe in that place, right? That That's that's the thing. If I'm in a Kroger freezer, what is that temperature and what is that humidity? And if that freezer failed, can you tell me that it's getting warm in there? You know, the humidity thing, well, what do you need a humidity for? Well, I got news for you. If the sprinkler up on this ceiling over here, if the guy walked into the ladder and hit that thing and it started spewing crap at me, I mean, mist at me, it started misting at me, this AP can tell whether there's any mist in the air or not. You know, show me another AP that can do that. You know, this AP basically can make it your smart building. It can it can do real-time data, intervive, you know, if, if you want to you know, take it from the next level. Well, I just want my building to be safe and I, and I've got sensors, but I want, want one view, one pane. I want to see everything. These sensors are, are really awesome. I mean, you know, the things that, that you'll be able to do with them and the things that you can do with them. Right? So to wrap up on the 9136, I want to talk about power on that thing. Remember when I was telling you, you know, that, that that's like the Mike Tyson APs or whatever, that AP is a badass AP. I mean, it's got Four radios, eight radios, five gig, sensor radios, BLE radios, M gig five, and the highest USB power. So this AP wants dot three BT or UPOE because it's 47.3 watts. Now you got a lot of control of that power with power profiles and other things I'm going to tell you about to knock that down or you can put it in reduce mode. But but that AP basically is probably our highest drawing AP because no, there's no other AP that can give you nine watts on USB power if you need it or two five gigs and six gig and one. So that said, you know, to get back to this, you know, the AP is like a person kind of thing. You know, the brain of that AP, you know, the, the, the software of that AP has now been changed a bit, right? We make the very best APs, bar none. Okay, now we're going to take those very best APs and we're going to move them so that they'll work or put that brain in there, if you will. So they'll work whether it's on a DNA persona or whether it's on a Meraki persona. You know what that does? That gives you the very best APs. So we've got three brand new APs we're kicking out the door here. You can buy the, the if you look at them kind of like, you know, I just keep looking at them like, like these are beautiful hardware. <laughs> it's awesome. If you like the 91, 64, and 66, you can order those today. There's another little smaller one coming out that, that is not orderable yet, but will be soon. These all have internal antennas. They're, they're the environmental sensor that I've just crowed all about is on the 9130 or 9166, and it's on the 9136. So, you know, the, the takeaway here is 
that you've got the 9136, which is, you know, the baddest AP in the industry. You've got the Meraki Super AP. You can go either way, or you can now go with these new three APs that we're releasing. The new a APs take kind of the best of both here because now we're using the Cisco brackets. We've added local DC power back into the thing. You know, you know, we've always we had that originally in Aeronet Meraki's had it. So we put that back in to have consistency so you're not losing anything. You've got USB ports, there's LEDs for the different personas. And you, of course, you've got that rock and radio and XOR architecture. So looking at the lineup now, you've got five APs, you know, the, the dedicated Meraki, the dedicated catalyst, and three of them now that are super rock and hardware that will work on either platform. So I'm real happy about that. You know, you look at these APs and you go, God, they got five APs. You know, the best competitor you can find might have two. You know, why do you have so many? You know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got APs embedded in antenna arrays sitting at the Cleveland Cavaliers Stadium. We've got, I mean, we make many, many things, but but these three APs, okay, give you, you know, basically, you know, entry level, two by two, small, your retail, you don't want to spend any money. The only thing you let out is your breath, you suck that back in, you got to justify every dollar. That 9162 is for you. It's cute, works, and it's reliable. Or you might say, I don't need, 5 gig M gig, I can live with 2.5 and, and, you know, you got a 9164 mid range and 9166 is the top end. If, if you're not doing the 9136, you, you know, in my opinion, you want to be doing the 9166. But the reason for so many of them is we don't lose deals. You know, there's always somebody trying to come out with something smaller or something cheaper, or something with one more feature than we do. So, so we want a full portfolio and that's why we have these many APs. So if you, if you take a look at at the APs down, you know, this is just a different slide. I won't dwell on it, but it puts the 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 three of the new CW APs, you know, the, the Cisco wireless APs in there that work on either platform and the 9136. Puts them all in one one slide. And again, everything here is orderable today except the 9162, and that'll be out soon. Let's take a look at the mechanical design just a little bit. So We've got a, a, an enlarged recessed area now on the back for cabling and things. And of course, it works with the same brackets as I mentioned before. Looking at that, you know, you see a little difference in color there. That's just a prototype that it was plugged into. But all of the APs have this, this light color that's over to the right there. But the cables now, if you got rough, you know, tough cat six cables or whatever, they, they fit a little bit better in the, into the AP now. If you look at the, the side of it, you now have a DC power input jack. If you've got the 9166, you got 5 gig. If you got the 9164, you got 2.5 uh, M gig. Console port, reset button, and your environmental sensors. So it's a nice, clean, laid out AP. If you look at the four pads at the bottom where it slides into the bracket, right between those, you'll see a little square. Little squares of metal, and the AP actually slides into that metal bracket, picks up a ground there, you know. So you've got a really nice you know, method to ground the AP, you know, we found some customers want that even though the AP is fully isolated from everything. This is just a chart that gives you an idea of the different sizes of the AP. So that 9136, like I said, it's the biggest, baddest, toughest AP out there. It's just a little bit bigger than the, than the uh, Cisco wireless CW66 and 64. And then of course there's a 9130AX and the 4800 just for references. So I want to talk about, I, I went through the antenna placement on that 9136, and it's busy in there, right? We cleaned it up a little bit better on the 9166 because we dropped the dual 5 gig feature. In other words, th this AP cannot do two fives and a six. It just does a 5 gig and a six, right? So, you know, and it has XOR, so so you could, if you turn off the six, you can do do it, but, you know, that's, Kind of how it's had the scanning radio, you know, the antennas are again, the corners are the dual band, you know, the, the BLE is a purple one off to the, to the left there. Your green ones are your, you can do five and six gig. And of course your scanning radio antennas one and two on the, on the top and the bottom. Again, this gives you that full fit. Jim's going to talk a little bit about, you know, what these scanning radios do and how useful they are, but uh, you know, just suffice it to say, you need, you need those radios, especially if you want to know what's in your environment. So this is a breakdown of the new AP with its cover off. 
same kind of thing. Your Alfred loop antennas are on the inside of the of the plastic lid. Your other dedicated antennas, you know, are on that metal ground plane where they can radiate really well. And if we talk about mounting, already kind of beat that to death a little bit, but there's there's some pictures of it. There's two brackets, by the way, bracket one, bracket two. Bracket one is small and tight for ceilings. It's the best bracket you can put on a ceiling. We don't use any of these extension things or stuff that moves the bracket down lower. If you decide you want to put it on an electrical box, then you've got this Swiss cheese thing. Heck, this thing will even fit on an old telephone, you know, thing, stick it on there. You know, I mean, we've accounted for electrical boxes, things like if you're a Chipotle or something, you want to get that AP from your really high ceiling down to where it's useful. You can put it on a pole, drop an electrical box on, put that bracket on, you're good to go. So, so that's kind of the brackets in a nutshell. The POE looked a little messy on that 9136 because it needs a lot of power. The nice thing about the new uh, CW series APs is you can get all full functionality with these products all on 30 watt, right? And and if you but if you're looking to get USB power, you know we no long, we don't do nine watts like we do on nine one thirty six. We do four and a half watts, right? So if you do four and a half watt, you you know USB power and all, you can get all of this down really efficiently. So the difference between the sixty one or I mean the sixty six and the sixty two is that five you know M gig at five gig versus M gig at two point five gig. You know it's just a little bit. The 62 is just a little bit more cost effective. If you are still running 3.8 F power and you're lost, well, you could you could at least configure the APs. You know, they'll come up on 15 watts and let you configure them. And we have a power injector, a new power in seven that'll work just great for for high power devices. So that said, we've done a lot, a lot of software. There's a lot of software enhancements going on. We save you that one watt power with the in integration of that FET bridge just from the get go. But we're we're now introducing a lot of new power profiles, methods to save to turn off all those radios. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't want six gig to run in your environment at a certain time, or maybe you want to shut all the radios off at, at, a t at, at on scheduled intervals. You have now the control to do all of that. So, you know, to recap, we've got we make the best APs in the world, bar none. Okay, you know, out of Richfield, Ohio. And now you can take those three APs and put them on either software. I don't care what what software you put on the AP, whether it's whether it's the Meraki Persona dashboard stack or the Cisco DNA. You can go either way with it. You're still looking at the best sensors, XO or radios, the best multiband radio isolation performance. Every dB counts. We do our best on these APs. If anybody is ever in this area, I don't care if you've never worked for a company and you just watch this podcast. If you're in this area in Richfield, Ohio, you're invited to come look. And my name's Fred Behouse. Email Fred and reach out to me. Any questions? Do we have anything? I don't know how I'm doing time wise, whether I'm running too long, but that's that's what I wanted to cover today. I have a question. Sure. Um, for, for years, I've seen 3600s, 3700s, 3800s in ceiling mount enclosures that replace the ceiling tile. Do these do these fit into ceiling enclosures and is there any performance hit or any other hits or enhancements? There, there are two ways to do a ceiling enclosure. You know, one of the things that that you know when I was talking about those mounting brackets, I didn't tell you a lot of competitors use plastic ones. I've had a lot of fires where the 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 the, the, the building caught on fire and the whole ceiling's burned down, the AP's still up there, it doesn't even have a radome anymore. There's metal elements and it's still blinking and people are attached to it, right? So 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 the question is when you take that antenna array. And you start burying it in plastic. It depends on what that plastic is, right? I mean, I, I saw somebody tweeted out the other day something about, you know, Amazon released a new router enclosure and it's all metal cage work. It's like, yeah, really. But but if you take this AP and you put this in a, you put a, a you know, a plastic box of some sort, and it's a ceiling enclosure, and you and you and you put the AP above the ceiling. If you don't get too far above the ceiling. The, the the performance degradation really doesn't isn't much, right? You can get get a lot of things. We have a lot of third party partners, you know, the the Excel techs, Tesco's, you know, of the world, those kind of people that'll you know Oberon that'll give you a bracket, you know, a, a hardened box for a hospital clean room, and you could basically just the the lid of the AP is the only thing that's flush with the box. Everything else is locked and secured. That'd be the best way, but it's probably more expensive. If I take this AP. 
and I take a drop ceiling and I move the drop ceiling tile and, and I lay the AP on top of the tile and poke a hole through there so I can see the LED. You, you know, the performance between that and down an inch or so on is negligible unless you have a bunch of metal crap in the ceiling. You know, if you've got, you know, wires and, you know, silver metal duct work and all that, now you're screwing my pattern up. You, you know, you want the antenna. That antenna is designed to radiate down outward 360. It wants to be on that ceiling. If you put it on a wall, it's going to radiate light up and down. It's going to work great if you have a small environment. You know, your your Smithsonian they they do that a lot of times with their with their wireless kiosks. They put our APs in there that way. But if you've got phones and they roam from Wi-Fi, if you put it on a wall, it's going to radiate more up and more down. You'll get more roaming on the other floors, things like that that are not good. But uh, you can mount this AP. No problem above a, above a ceiling or in a plastic enclosure, provided that plastic doesn't have some sort of metallic paint or something that that, that affects it. Is is the plan for the future to have all APs both supported by like a catalyst controller and and the Meraki cloud, or is it just for the three new APs? Yes, we want we want all of the APs to be built out of Richfield, Ohio, because this is you know you know I, I kid you not, I mean. You can't find anybody that can model an antenna and build an antenna and understand RF the way we do. You know, I mean, you, you, you know, that hardware, you, you know, you can have the, you know, I said, you know, an AP is like a human, right? You can have the mind of Stephen Hawking, but if that AP has got the same body, it ain't going to live in that hot Goodyear tire plant. It's, you know, General Electric came in here one day and they looked at me and go, how long is this AP going to last? And I looked at him and said, well, it's going to last as long as, you're going to want it to last you. You know, the technology will move before you. What, why do you care? And they said, uh, we built trains. Trains last 100 years. I want to know how long I can have this running if I want it to run. And I told them, I said, well, you know, I've got, I got an AP here that we made in 1999. I've got one of these stuck on my radio tower in a plastic box, and it's, been, it's still running, and there's a woman down the street that uses it for genealogy. I don't give her any bandwidth. I give her that old 10, uh, that old uh, 10 meg link. But the point is, is that thing's 1999 and it's still blinking, it's still working and it doesn't have a problem. So we build things not to fail. You can, you can argue that it's over-designed, but I'm gonna tell you it's not over-designed. I'm gonna tell you it's designed to work where our bread and butter is. And that's, we, we were founded doing things for retail and industry and, and 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 in those you know i could take that access point i could take this this 9136 access point i could stick this thing in a coal mine and like i said i can tell you if it's missed and in that mine i can tell you the temperature of that thing and i don't have to worry about that ap failing either you know we've gotten people who've actually duct tape these aps to a tree in a jungle right and then a, a year later they send it back because it's a failure and they want to know what's wrong well, it's not designed to work outside. We've got products for that. Well, bugs got in the Ethernet cable, ate up our our, our heat gap material. And you know, I was telling you before we we put we put this heat gap material in there to gap the the hot electronics to the metal. Hell, the bugs ate up that heat gap material, and after they did that, you know, the AP then failed. Well, okay, but but they don't fail. I mean, that's why, you know, I laugh if I decide I'm not throwing AP, I'd rather throw patents and other things around today. And Jim's like, that's because of supply chain. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, no, it's not, you know, you know, these APs are orderable. And I'm,